Please then, uh, you have the floor. Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Let me share my screen. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so, um, I'll keep as short as possible. Uh, about the asset that we use for tracing humor, um, it's uh, well, it's basically the uh, 7 for Samadol 2020, but um, I believe it's also called, uh, called uh, Humicro Edit, uh, the asset. Um, it had two tasks. One was uh, to uh, identify uh, if uh, the uh, change uh, um, headline was uh, more humorous than the original, and uh, the other one was comparing two humorous headlines, which was more, one more humorous. Uh, we focused more on the first task uh, from task seven, um, and um, these are some sample headlines from the um, from the data set. Um, the small issue that the data set has uh, is that it's pretty skewed uh, in the sense that um, you don't have like a stable number of reviewers. You see that uh, the more the best sample we had was with five reviewers. Otherwise, with ten reviewers from one to ten, it, it, it's uh, there are some big differences, and you can't have, have a, a good baseline by using the whole data set, you should probably focus on using five reviewers instead of the other uh, three uh, possibilities. Um, and um, they grade uh, each uh, headline um, change as um, either not funny, slightly funny, moderately funny, and so on. Um, so this is the total reviewer score histogram. Basically, you can see that um, the sum for uh, all the uh, grades from all five reviewers. So we looked only at um, um, headlines that were reviewed by five people um, tends towards the lower spectrum. So it's probably an uh, imbalanced data set. Um, and we established that, okay, a good threshold for this would be seven. So seven would mean that from five reviewers, either two considered very funny and one moderate, one slightly funny, or um, two, three considered uh, moderately funny, so with two, and um, uh, one with slightly funny and so on. So it's uh, a bit high than it would be needed, but it's somewhat of a Seven is in the case that the majority of the reviewers consider that funny. Um, okay, so with an average grade, for example, these are some headlines that are considered funny. Uh, this being headlines that ha have already been edited. And um, we see also the grades. Um, and based on the uh, modified asset, we established, okay, uh, we can do either classification or regression. So with classification, we used uh, this column. And with regression, we used uh, both average or some depends uh, on the context. Um, so um, these are some example headlines, but that are not considered funny fun by the um, by the reviewers. Uh, as established before, this might be considered funny since theoretically it's a majority that consider it not directly funny, but again, it's a empirical threshold more than a statistically established threshold. Um, in regards to what models we use, so we use naive base as expected. Uh, a small note on this, uh, everything was done in a Jupyter notebook. So, um, one sec. So we basically had uh, all the Python code and uh, the plotly visualizations that are interacted all in a, a notebook. We also did some work on uh, using um, annotation metrics like Cohen's ca Kappa or uh, using um, rather more um, recent uh, embedding techniques like BERT. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it, it was only um, uh, more... Um, refine the approach that we have tried. Uh, we can see that for this small data set, which is only 50k records, um, it's um, it, it's just enough to use some simple models and 
uh, if we were to use the asset like for example sarcasm on reddit or so on we could have had a significantly different uh, outcome out of that so knife base works very good 72 percent accuracy with a 80 percent train 20 percent split i believe um 73 percent for svm um and uh, when it come, came to neural networks we use some shallow, uh, shallow neural networks uh, basically uh, using uh, uh, dropout using uh, dropout layers uh, using uh, um, rectified linear units at activations uh, uh, using uh, either uh, softmax or, or um, uh, linear activation for the last uh, layer, depending if it were classification or um, classific classification funny or not funny or regression a score. Um, this is basically how the architecture, a sample architecture can work for uh, classification and a sample architecture for regression. Um, Okay, so the results were aggregated using uh, TensorBoard. So basically from Keras, we exported some metrics. Uh, and um, for example, you can also access this. Uh, let me just share this. Um, chat. So basically um, you can see the results in the TensorBoard and uh, see exactly, okay, um, how the, uh, training worked you can also while training you can watch uh, you can visualize the results in TensorBoard and um, um, it, it's um, pretty neat that you can do it from Keras directly um, okay so um, basically what we can see here that is that classification even with a reasonable test, uh, train test split like 70-30 or 80-20 um, is already a bit overfitted and leads to higher accuracy, but uh, we can see some um, um, missteps in the loss values. Um, and for regression, we automatically obtain less. Uh, for example, here is a regression that was trained on uh, the reviewer some. Um, okay, so um, this is uh, basically it. Uh, some conclusions for this uh, regression scoring. Sure, it's more difficult to do depending on exactly what metric you use, if you use a sum, if you use a leverage, but um, basically always classification, a binary classification especially would be uh, easier to do than a regression or a scoring problem. Um, this uh, DAS that we have established and probably we thought a, a bit, um, a few paragraphs in, in the full text we've mentioned as a sort of a critique of the DAS set that it's a pretty small DAS set and, uh, and it should have been more diverse uh, if we wanted to do uh, more refined approaches. So if, if this DAS set works with using a rather more simple approach using TFIDF for embedding and using um, a neural networks or SBM or knife base, this asset surely isn't complex enough to do rather more uh, recent methods like XLM or BERT. Um, so, um, yeah, taking this into current considerations, we uh, can consider using other data sets like uh, sarcasm detection on uh, Reddit or um, and or using more uh, advanced embedding methods and uh, probably more than shallow neural networks. So this is basically it. Uh, I hope I fit it into the time slot. <laughs> Thank you. That was... Uh very fast so we actually uh, catched uh, caught up uh, on the time that we missed so we have time for some questions uh, i can't really see everybody that's a bit weird let me see uh, could you unshare the screen yeah, yeah. thank you <laughs> so any questions
otherwise I have one uh, and that is uh, maybe you you said it but I didn't uh, catch it so what are the features that you use for the training the Bayesian network or the SVM okay so um, if you remember from um, the presented uh, uh, the assets uh, we did this so maybe I could share again yes sir. Mm -hmm. So basically for classifications, we have established if they're funny or not funny based on uh, the sum grade. So it's basically the sum grade, if it's uh, higher than seven, higher or, and or equal, um, we consider it funny, uh, meaning some, uh, the sum of the um, reviewer scores. Um, for the neural network and or regression part, uh, we have used, um, I believe, uh, the reviewer sum initially uh, we also did with the reviewers average but uh, since uh, average is a bit tricky to use as a feature we have used mostly the reviewer sum and the stamped headlines um, do you want me to go more into detail or it's if it's enough uh, to answer your question but uh, how would that allow you to uh, to classify a new headline well, we basically train them all on the viewer sum. Uh, now, um, d depending on the classification and or uh, regression part. So with a um, classification and or regression, we can give feed the model a new headline and afterwards this will determine either uh, the regression score or the reviewer sum. So ba basically we have um, the models are saved as objects. For example, these are from scikit-learn, SVC, SVM, and from Keras, the models can be saved. So basically, again, this is the model summary that I've shown, and uh, the models can be uh, saved through either to a um, weight file, and you have the weights of the model, and then you can reload the model and per per perform uh, inference and or prediction. Uh, basically, the, both concepts are equally the same, roughly. Uh, or you can save the model object as an ONNX, uh, which is a universal um, interop, um, um, let's say, serialization solution for uh, models from multiple uh, neural network libraries. And that model, again, can, be, can perform inference on, um, in a different context. So you can train a model on Keras and, and or TensorFlow. And uh, then you can serve the model through ONNX, either through ONNX serving or um, some other solution. So there are multiple options uh, to do this. Okay, thanks. Uh, any other questions? <clears throat> Obviously not, so uh, thanks again. Thanks. Then uh, we move to our...